Thank you once again to Dell Technologies for sponsoring this video. Last time on the channel, we went over how to use Rhino 6 slash Rhino 7 using your very own Dell Precision 5560 workstation. This week, I have the honor of introducing you guys to Revit by Autodesk. So without further ado, here is the long awaited Revit tutorial. And I will once again be using my Dell Precision laptop. Now, what is Autodesk Revit? So Revit, I wanna say at least in the United States is used in 90 to 95 percent of professional architecture firms. It is the industry leading EIM software and BIM or BIM stands for building information modeling. If you have my apartment for instance, this originally was a set of drawings that was probably derived from a BIM model and Revit is just a great database of information that just keep your project together, organized, clean. It will have door schedules, window schedules, layouts, floor plans, reflected ceiling plans, and everything in between. Section drawings, elevation, site plans, schematic drawings, construction drawings, everything. It's fantastic. Another way to put it is BIM is a methodology. It's a way of working and Revit is the tool that you use to work in such a way. And it's just, it's so powerful and you will need a powerful laptop to handle it all. And we will get into our sponsor and their message a little bit later. But first things first, you need to download Revit. If you navigate over to the Autodesk site, they offer a completely free trial for 30 days and your trial lasts even longer if you're a student. So go ahead, download it. Make sure that you also install the component library because I'm stationed in the United States. I downloaded the English Imperial Family Library, Base Library. This is important because when you want to place components like toilets, sinks, stoves, these components are already preloaded in along with your columns and all the stuff in between. Now, as everything is downloading right now, I did want to talk about this video's sponsor, Dell Technologies. In architecture, you will need a powerful workstation to handle all these heavy lifting softwares like Rhino 6 and 7 and Autodesk Revit. My Dell Precision 5560 workstation has been the perfect fit for me and it completely meets all of my needs as an architecture student and emerging architect. It's ultra thin, super slim, and has been specifically designed to handle all of the AI slash VR workloads that is is very typical in our profession. More specifically, I have a Xeon processor chip and this allows me to run multiple heavy lifting softwares and applications on my computer and it will continue to run smoothly. It also operates on an NVIDIA RTX A2000 graphics card with four gigabytes of memory. You guys already know that when you are looking for a laptop in this field, graphics is where it's at. It is so important. <laughs> and my graphics card has actually been been vetted by software developers like Adobe Creative Suite and CAD softwares because they know, they just know architecture requires a lot, a lot of heavy lifting from the laptop itself. So this is why this workstation is quite literally built for architects and why I highly recommend it to any emerging professionals or students out there if you're looking for a laptop. The memory capacity allows me to accelerate my workflow save my time and increase my productivity. And other logistics for my laptop include two terabytes of storage, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and it operates on the Windows 10 Pro. Overall, this workstation allows me to get my best work done. So using Dell Technologies and their fantastic products allows me to bring up my best architectural ideas to life. Now, if you're interested to learn more about the Precision line, generally speaking, please be sure to click the link in my bio and our friends at Dell Technologies are more than happy to help customize your perfect precision line workstation for you and let me know how it goes. All right, now let's get back into Revit. Without further ado, here's how to use Revit 101. Today we are going to be drawing falling water, tracing the first floor plan. And once you install Revit, you will be getting this window. Just make sure you log in and it's just the very generic window. Gotta love it. Revit takes some time to develop these certain skills and awarenesses of certain tools that are available. First, let's get started with a general overview. 
overview of location of certain commands, critical commands that I commonly use. You're gonna press new. I use the Imperial architecture to create a new project. As an overview, we have walls, doors, component options under the build tab, and you're gonna spend majority of your time regarding structure, steel, precast systems. We aren't really gonna cover that. Insert, we will be using this tab to insert our floor plan reference. The annotate tab is good for dimensioning stuff, but once again, we aren't really gonna cover that in this video. This is just a brief introduction. The view tab is a good way to see how your project looks from different perspectives and angles like in section. And the last tab is the modify tab, and this is where you're able to join geometry, split geometry, rotate, and so forth. Now, how do walls work in Revit? Let's just get right into building. I feel like with Revit, because it is such an overwhelming software, a lot of people are hesitant just to start building. So on the left-hand side near your properties, you have all these options, these wonderful options for walls. I typically stick with generic building, but you are allowed to change the structure of walls in Revit. And just using certain options in the top center, I could build with circles or a polygon or just a rectangle. Typically in Revit, you're gonna be building just, just boxes and perpendicular lines and parallel lines. If you wanna insert doors, it's very simple. You go to architecture, build door, and then you can just select the wall and then your wall now becomes the host. Moving on, how do we import images? So I go up to the insert import image and just paste it right there in the center of my screen on the first floor. Under the modify tab, after I click scale, I will click a second reference point and drag it out to five feet given the scale of my drawing. Here I will have to go under the modify rotate to rotate my reference drawing as well. Repeat the exact same steps to scale. Now the important part is setting up your level lines. Now under architecture datum level, we're allowed to draw levels. Click on the 17 feet 10 inches or you could go to your properties panel on the left hand side and change the numbers there. You can also double click to change the level name and this as a result will change your floor plan name and just everything is very cohesive. Moving forward let's get on to constructing walls. Turn to architecture build wall. I'm going to grab a generic wall. You can press the tab key on your keyboard to flip wall and how it is placed on your sheet. Next, we are going to import some doors. If you go up to load family, you will get a box and this is where it's important to install that Revit base family library. So side note, if you are constructing another wall for this jet out here, you can go to modify, join, join this geometry so you have this nice, clean, cohesive line. You can also change the swing angle of the door under the properties and that's completely up to you as the draftsman how you want to represent your doors. Now one thing I do want to cover which is super important is to make sure you have a top constraint. So my top constraint is determined by how I set up the levels so I just changed that to level 2. Now you will know in the Farnsworth house that there is a lot of glass and a lot of glass curtain walls. You can go through, change the top constraint and bottom constraint, you can also offset it. So you can layer multiple types of walls on each other. So if I offset the bottom by two feet, I can add a solid wall underneath, which is exactly what the Farnsworth house does. I also add circular components. The way I did this curved wall is that I just selected that option under the build modify tab. Now you can go to view, now you can go to view 3D to get this 3D view. And it's important to go here just to check on your geometry and how everything's looking. Now let's talk about stairs. Stairs can be super complicated, but I'm just doing this simple split level stair. What you do is you just draw your two rises, click, stop, then click the last part of the set and bam there you go i can't tell you how simple it is drawing stairs in revit in comparison to rhino where you will have to individually model out your geometry but revit already calculates how many stairs you need to get up to that next level but your levels are determined by those datum lines that we drew in step one so I'm gonna go through and draw all these stairs. I can flip direction by pressing on those blue arrows and Revit will automatically assume that up is down and down is up. You can also drag those arrow keys on the left and right side of these stairs to adjust the width.
Now let's talk about adding floors. So I have all my walls built. We talked about curtain walls and even drawing stairs to circulate through the levels, but you need to circulate on something. So I'm gonna use this pick line tool to draw the outline of my floor. You can see in my reference plan, I have a lot of terraces. I'm gonna make sure that when I am drawing my floor plate, I'm including the terrace. In other words, when you're drawing floors, you aren't confined just to where your walls are, you can go beyond that. Another great tool to know is under the modify, you could do trim extend. And this just means that if you have lines that go beyond each other, their boundaries, it will just trim it out and make sure that you have a nice clean outline. And there you go, you have your fork. So once again, I'm gonna go back into my 3D view, just make sure everything looks okay. Now I'm gonna add some walls that are present on the terrace. So, and the way I just make sure that it's a partial wall is that it's unconnected. And I think I made the height either three or four feet in the properties manager. Now I don't have to join this wall geometry because it is unconnected to level two, but it is important for me to draw this geometry as it is drawn in the floor plan, first of all and it is important building information to model. So when in doubt, just model it. So here I'm just gonna go through and add another stair outside that goes up to floor two. Now what is a component? So we downloaded that component family library and they have preloaded ones like all these trees and desks but you can also model yourself a component so if we go to model in place component i just did a generic casework one we'll be modeling this bench just using a simple extrusion so when modeling for the extrusion all you have to do is create a generic outline and then you can adjust the actual height and that's the bench it's generic it doesn't really any properties or manufacturing details like your doors will, but that's another way you can model something three-dimensionally. Last thing I wanted to talk about was adding a gap in my floor because I do have this staircase going from the lower level all the way up to this first floor and all you have to do is edit your boundary and select where you want the gap to be. Now, if you do have any struggles with Revit, I highly recommend just searching up specifically your question. Autodesk Revit has a great community and common public forums that people will submit questions to. So if you're having a certain issue, chances are somebody else has it as well. And there's an answer out there for you. But if you think I know the answer, I, I might um, just leave me a comment down below and I'll get right back to you. Other than that, thank you so much to Dell Technologies once again for sponsoring this video. I will be having one more really super duper fun video going over rendering and how to render. Let me know if you have any other questions. Other than that, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Love you guys.